are bad, we are boss, we've got guts that squish and squash, army ants, we go marching along. Army ants! Hey guys, time for another toy history lesson. And this one is for one of my favorite obscure lines of the 80s. With the massive success of G.I. Joe and Transformers in the 80s, Hasbro decided to branch out in 87 with several new toy lines. And army ants marched into toy stores alongside other new Hasbro properties like Visionaries, Battle Beasts, Air Raiders, and Ninja Warriors. Up and hills, down and tails, as we hit the dusty trail, on the ants we go marching along. Hasbro was having a huge 87, both financially as well as literally, with the gargantuan Transformers Headmaster Fortress Maximus, and the colossal space shuttle complex, the G.I. Joe Defiant. But when it comes to toys, sometimes size doesn't matter. These squishy, squashy bottomed soldiers were organized into two opposing armies. The Orange Army, led by the incomparable General Patant, and the Blue Army, led by the legendary military genius General McAnther. While they didn't have any articulation, they were made up of two separatable parts. The hard rubber molded bodies each had removable abdomens that were slightly squishy rubber. We are bad, we are boss, we've got guts to squish and squash, army and we go marching along. Now, I always thought that the commercial said butts that squish and squash, since it's the tail section. But it's actually saying guts that squish and squash. If you look at proper ant anatomy, the tail section is called the abdomen. So I guess it makes sense that that's where all the guts would be. Army ants do stray from proper ant anatomy in a big way though because most of the army ants only have four legs. Some army ants have the expected six legs, and it's interesting that there is no consistency in this. In addition to the removable guts, some army ants also came with removable weapons and accessories, while others had their weapon and accessory details molded right into the figure. Each removable accessory attaches to the figure with a peg-in-hole approach, making them easy to attach. Attack! Collectors these days will have a real treasure hunt trying to come up with complete army ant figures, as these tiny accessories went missing pretty quickly. And I didn't even know they ever included things like guns, tools, and backpacks until recently since most of the ones I see are always missing all of those accessories. Rather than the usual good versus evil storyline of so many other toy lines of the 80s, the army ants are described as two opposing power-hungry forces locked in mortal combat. Highly trained and extremely rotten, these pesky little buggers want to devour everything and take the enemy by force. Collect them all mentality was in full effect in 87, and there were several rubber, non articulated toy lines that were vying for every kid's allowance money. Among the popular lines were the Smurfs, Strawberry Shortcake, California Raisins, Muscle, Monster in My Pocket. Because these monsters in my pocket are so much trouble when they're together. I have to put each one of them in their own box. And even odd little naked babies called oodles. What the hey? But unfortunately, army ants didn't successfully storm the beaches of toy stores. The toy line only lasted one year, but in that short time produced 40 unique ants, many of which had specialties similar to G.I. Joe team members. Yo, ants! And in some cases, even reused old or inspired new G.I. Joe code names. The Blue Army and Orange Army each have five teams. The color of the army ant guts are determined by the team they belong to. 
Of course, since the guts could be easily removed and swapped, this distinction may have only been relevant in the package. Let's take a look at the different teams, their members, and their colors. The Orange Army starts with General Pat Ant, and he has seven Special Strike Force team members. This team is identified by their orange bodies and purple guts. Lead me, follow me, or get out of my way! General Pat Ant included two pistols. Stalker. No, not that stalker. Came with a submachine gun. Snorkel head included a spear. The only easy day was yesterday. Blitzkrieg was equipped with a silver gun. And don't tell this ant it's over. Rambant. The ant version of Rambo included a red gun with a knife and bow molded to his hands. Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! Blighty came with a rifle and bayonet. Bo Guest came with a rifle. I'm not sharing the loot. Don't follow me. And Blackjack included a gun. It's not about the cards you're dealt. It's how you play the hand. Then there was the assault team, who had orange bodies and fuchsia guts. Megahertz was the ants version of Breaker and included a backpack radio. Breaker 1-9, this here's the rubber ant. Road Rash came with a gun on his back. And Grease Pit was the Grease Monkey, or Grease Ant, with a wrench in his hand. The sniper team members had orange bodies and yellow guts that glowed in the dark. Recoil, a code name for a Joe that would be used in 89, came with a sniper rifle. Or is that a night spotter rifle? Warpo came with an ammo dispenser on his back. And Repeater, another Joe codename that would be used in 88, also came with a sniper or night spotter rifle. One ant's fate comes from another ant's weight. Orange bodies and red guts identify the bazooka team. Loadout had a black backpack of ammo. Bug Eye came with a pistol. And Howler included a bazooka. I saw a sea serpent! The ants weren't just limited to ground warfare thanks to the Aerial Assault Squad. They featured OD green guts and orange bodies. Riki included a black backpack of ammo. Windy came with a removable propeller. Highway to the danger zone! And Bullseye code name that would be given to a cops figure the following year came with a silver gun. The Blue Army was led by General McAnther and his seven Special Forces team members, identified by blue bodies and lime green guts. General McAnther included a pipe. There is no substitute for victory. Gimme 50 included a gun. And Ura! Semper Fi came with a silver sword. Always faithful. Tailspin included a machine gun. Bone Crusher, huh, there's a Transformer's name, came with a throwing star. Constructicons unite! Knockdown came with a detonator for his TNT. Evo included a yellow sword and a silver pistol. Arr, where be the rum? And Jagged Tooth had a silver jagged sword. The Mortar Team had blue bodies and red guts. Bunko came with a silver backpack of ammo. Incoming had a grenade launcher. Sickness Pockum Parabellum. And Quick Hit came with a rifle. The Artillery Team was ready to shake the pillars of heaven. They had blue bodies with purple guts. Sneaky came with a communications dish for his head. Pig Out had a tank gun. Let's rock! And Ozone, also the name of a 91 Eco Warriors Joe, came with a huge missile. The Flamethrower Squad had yellow glow-in-the-dark guts with their blue bodies. Stabber 
Came with a rifle with a bayonet, naturally. Rip Pin had a huge grenade. And you can't have a flamethrower by Hasbro without a guy named Blowtorch. Came with a backpack of fuel. Mmm, pork chop sandwiches. The Bomber Squad blew things up real good with blue bodies and OD green guts. Razor Beak, no, not Laser Beak, came with wings on his back. Bombs away! Crossfire, also the name of an 87 radio control Joe vehicle, had a black pistol. And Snarl, much smaller than his Dinobot namesake, had a red backpack of ammo. Army ants were also sold in Europe years later under different brands, such as the Italian version, known as Combatini, and the French version, called Termitors. <laughs> the same 40 army ants molds were used, but figures were painted single iridescent colors, and the tails were made of glittery, transparent rubber. Rare transparent ants could also be found. While the North American Army Ants were released in squadrons of three or eight figures on cardboard blister packs, the European Combatini were available in packages of one, buckets of four, or pyramids of eight or fourteen. Although there was never an Army Ants cartoon or comic to provide that much needed synergy to the line in the 80s, the battling bugs finally made it to print 30 years later in 2017 with IDW's Scarlet Strike Force Issue 1. In this issue, G.I. Joes are shrunk down on a mission to defuse a tiny nuclear bomb. As if a G.I. Joe Army Ants crossover wasn't epic enough, the shrink ray is invented by Matt Tracker. As in, Tracker's gonna lead the mission. As in, mask. In the comic, a version of the army ants are created by Cesspool, when he irradiates normal ants and mutates them into soldiers. Cesspool also shrinks himself down to ant size and uses his creations against the shrunken G.I. Joes. Although only 40 army ants were officially released, you can continue the G.I. Joe army ants crossover yourself. All you need is some sticky tack and ant guts, and you can create your own custom Joe army ants. Like General Ant Bernathy. What you have is an order, G.I. Joe. And Cobra Commander. I was once a man. And I also have to mention the Army Ants Battle Hymn, which was used in the commercial. An homage to the Quezon song written in 1908, the unofficial U.S. Army song. Call off your numbers loud and strong. Wherever we go. So it's high, high he to this tiny military as the army ants go marching along into toy history. Big thanks to these antastic sites that provided valuable intel for this microscopic mission. FigureRealm.com and VirtualToyChest.com. Check them out for more pics and info on the blue and orange ant armies. Big thanks to the Patreon tribe for your support and for making the Patreon page a super fun place to hang out. If you'd like to reminisce about the army ants, scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, blast subscribe. Until next time, grab the eggs!